Good morning. Bonjour, Anine. As we begin today, we want to acknowledge the place in which we are gathered is situated on treaty land, steeped in rich Indigenous history. This land is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek Nation, specifically the Chippewa Tri-Council Nations, comprised of the Beausoleil First Nations, Chippewas of Rama First Nations, and Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation. This acknowledgement shows respect for how Indigenous people have shaped Ontario and reminds us of our important connection to this land where we learn, work, and heal. Let us reflect on what each of us can do to reconcile the past and work toward, uh, together toward a shared, more just future. I would also like to recognize that today marks the two-year anniversary since the first COVID-19 case was confirmed in Ontario. At that time, none of us knew the impact or could predict the longevity of the pandemic. RVH, like all hospitals across the province, had to quickly react and pivot to the ever-changing environment, sourcing PPE, reducing surgical volumes, creating critical care capacity while never, ever losing focus on the most important thing, providing safe, quality patient care. Sadly, RVH had the first COVID-related patient death in the province, and it really made us aware that we were in for a long and tough fight. I want to thank everyone at RVH for their perseverance, commitment, and willingness to rise up to this challenge. We've learned many lessons along the way, and RVH will continue to be here for the communities we serve. And while we have turned the corner on our battle, our thoughts go out to the people of Ukraine who are facing such a dark and troubling time. To begin today's announcement, I would like to welcome a number of friends joining us today. The Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford. Welcome back, Premier Ford. Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, uh, the Honourable Christine Elliott. Attorney General and MPP for Barrie, Springwater, Oramadante, the Honourable Doug Downey. MPP Barrie, Innisfil, Andrea Kanjan. The Mayor of the Town of Innisfil and Deputy Warden, County of Simcoe, Lynn Dolan. Doug Frost, First Vice Chair of the RVH Board of Directors, and we're also joined today by Michael Gleason, second vice chair of the board of directors, and Marianne Frith, who co-chairs the Moments Matter Capital Campaign. Welcome, everyone. I want to begin today by thanking you, Premier Ford, sorry, my back is to you, <laughs> and your government for the outstanding support over the past two years. Provincial funding enabled RVH to open 140 additional beds including a 70-bed field hospital that the Premier toured last July. We converted almost 40 critical care spaces. We hired more than 300 staff, including nurses, cleaners, screeners, and respiratory therapists. Your support ensured RBH could not only safely care for people from across this region during the pandemic, but also accept the transfer of more than 250 patients from the overburdened GTA hospitals. Of course, Royal Vic has a very proud history of caring for Simcoe Muskoka. In fact, this year we celebrate our 125th anniversary, a century and a quarter of always being here for the people of our region, 125 years of care and compassion and constant growth to meet the needs of our growing region. 25 years ago, RVH began a new chapter with a brand new hospital here on Georgian Drive, but it was full almost the moment it opened. In 2012, we opened an expansion, phase one expansion, including the regional cancer center and more than 100 beds. We called it phase one because we always knew that there must be a phase two, which would include a major expansion here at the North Campus, along with the development of a new South Campus. A second hospital in Simcoe Muskoka County has long been one of RVH's strategic goals. After a three-year comprehensive search and unprecedented community consultation, during which we logged 63,500 interactions, last fall, RVH announced the location of its new South Campus at Innisfil Beach and Young Street. The South Campus will open in 10 years as an outpatient health hub, evolving to a full-service hospital in 20 years, seeing almost 350,000 patients each year. RVH's one system, two site model means the North and the South Campus will be integrated, not interdependent. For instance, if a patient gets a heart test at the South Campus, they'll receive their advanced cardiac procedure here at the North Campus. So you can see why the expansion must proceed together. 
We know the population of South Simcoe County is going to double over the next couple of decades. And if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's that we must ensure we have enough beds and critical care spaces to meet the needs of our exploding population. Actually, there's nothing more important when, than your health and that of your loved ones. Your parent is sick, your child suffers a broken bone, you need a diagnosis of a troubling health issue. You want to get the care you need as quickly and as close to home as possible. Frankly, nothing else matters. That's why RVH's expansion will plan to do. We're going to double the size of this facility. We're going to add more operating rooms, beds, specialized services here at the north, and we're going to build a new hospital in Innisfil. All of these features will ensure accessible, quality health care for generations to come. Our ambitious plan has received outstanding support from Attorney General Downey and MPP Kanjan, along with the town of Innisfil, the city of Barrie, Oromodonte, and Springwater. Thousands of community members told us, you've chosen the right location for the South Campus. Now please build it as soon as possible. The need is now. In fact, Premier Ford, when you visited RVH last summer and we took the opportunity to tell you a bit about our capital plan, your response was simply, let's get it done. Well, that's become our mantra. And I have to tell you, Premier Ford, I probably quoted you a few times since then. Now we know the timelines to build a hospital are long and complex, but we're so pleased to welcome you here today with news about how your government will accelerate development of the South Campus, get shovels in the ground faster, and bring health care and jobs to Simcoe County sooner. Premier, welcome back to RVH. Now it's my honour to welcome Attorney General Doug Downey, MPP for Barrie, Springwater, or Medante, the Honourable Doug Downey, to come to the podium. Doug? Thank you so much, Janice, for that wonderful introduction and, and for highlighting some of the ways that our government and our Premier have shown leadership. I can't tell you how great it is to have the Minister of Health and Deputy Premier and the Premier in this space at RVH, which is a heart of Simcoe County. It's a place where we're providing frontline care, and I want to thank the people in the back who are doing the actual frontline care. And it's great. It's just great to have the, the news that we're about to hear, and I'm going to be brief because we want to get to the good stuff. But I want to say one thing. One thing about the character of our government and the character of our leadership in our government, both Minister Elliott and my, my friend Andrea Kanjan, a colleague from Barry Innisfil, uh, we've talked about this a lot. But the leadership that our Premier has shown over, over the years through a pandemic, that's when you get the real resolve of, of an individual is through a crisis. But not only have we made our way through this time, we've also been able to build and expand about infrastructure, health care, because the Premier understands what Ontarians need and he understands that we need to deliver it because nobody else will. So I will stop there. I'm so thrilled that you're here, Premier, and I'll welcome you to the podium. Thank you. Well, first of all, th th thank you so much, Doug, and, and Janice, thank you, and I, I do remember that. We were in the hallway and you showed me the picture and let's get it done, and, and that's exactly what you did. So on, on behalf, first, first of all, good afternoon, everyone, and I, I just want to thank uh, the champions, as I call them. Thank you for everything you've done uh, throughout this pandemic. And uh, on behalf of uh, Minister Downey, Minister Elliott, and MPP, Andrea Kanjan, let me start by thanking, again, the staff here, all the staff at Royal Victoria Regional Health Centre. The doctors, nurses, and support staff have given their all to take care of us when we need it most. And we're absolutely so grateful for everything you do. I also want to thank Jana Scott, who leads a truly world-class team here. And after 17 years at Royal Victoria Regional Health Centre, Janice is entering a well-earned retirement this June, but you know, Janice, I, I don't know if you'll ever retire. You'll find something else, because just, just an incredible uh, person, and she certainly uh, left her legacy here at RVH. Friends, after two very long years, we've come so far. Because of the sacrifices made by Ontarians and the amazing care provided by our healthcare heroes, we've been able to safely and cautiously reopen our province. But looking back, we know that Ontario wasn't ready when the pandemic uh, hit us. And you're right, it's two years uh, today, I think the World Health Organization 
uh, announced this pandemic. Now, now looking ahead, uh, we can be confident that Ontario is better prepared for the future. We're producing more of the masks, gowns, gloves, goggles, face shields right here at home because of our ambitious plan that's building Ontario. We're adding thousands of hospital and long-term care beds with the support of our government's historic funding. Towns like Barrie and Innisfil are attracting more doctors, nurses, and personal support workers to take care of patients. But we can do more to build a stronger and more resilient health system. And today, our government is continuing to do so right here in Simcoe County because we're investing $2.5 million to support the planning of Royal Victoria's new South Campus Health Hub. This is the first step of building a new health hub to better serve the people of Simcoe County. The hub will provide urgent care services and day surgeries, providing faster access to procedures and relieving capacity on the hospital's emergency department. This redevelopment will put patients first and ensure they can receive high quality, timely care when they need it. It will bring more critical healthcare infrastructure to a growing population that needs it desperately. And I need to give a huge, huge shout out to Mayor Lynn Dolan of Innisville, who is here with us today. Thank you, Lynn, for everything you're doing. You know, Lynn knew that the people of uh, Simcoe County needed more hospital capacity and there was no time to wait. So she took the initiative and requested an MZO to make sure we could get shovels in the ground with no delay. And as always, we listen to our municipal partners because they know best what's happening in their communities and how we as a province can help. So again, thank you to Mayor Dolan, MPP Andrea Kanjan, Minister Downey and Minister Elliott, who worked so hard to deliver this for the people of Simcoe. My friends, in Barrie and across Ontario, we're making good on our promise to end hallway health care with a historic, and these are big, big numbers, uh, with a historic 30.2 billion, with a B, billion dollars invested over the next 10 years to renovate and expand hospitals around the province. These are not Band-Aid solutions, we're getting shovels in the ground and investing for a stronger future for generations to come. Our province has come so far and we can't afford to go back to the politics of no. Instead, your government is saying yes. Yes to building modern hospitals, yes to investing in our communities, and yes to building a stronger and more resilient province. Friends, let's say yes to a better and brighter future that the people of Ontario deserve. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. Now, I'll hand it over to the champion herself, Mayor Dolan. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so very much, Premier Ford. Uh, this is such a game changer for the town of Innisfil. And I have to tell you that when we found out about the MZO, I texted the Premier and I said, we would so love for you to be in our community to announce this. 60 seconds later, my phone rang. This is Doug Ford. I'd love to come to Innisfil. So thank you so much for being here with us today. South Simcoe is growing so rapidly and we must plan to meet the evolving healthcare needs that come with that growth. Innisfil Town Council recognizes that as we grow, it is important to ensure that additional health services are readily available to our community, which is why we work so closely with RVH to request a ministerial zoning order from the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. And if you would please pass on my thanks to Minister Clark uh, for, for seeing our vision and, and doing that work for us. We are excited to work closely with our partners at Royal Victoria Regional Health Centre as they develop this South Campus site in the heart of Innisfil. On behalf of Innisfil citizens, I'd like to thank Premier Ford, Deputy Premier Elliott, Minister Clark, 
Barry Innisfil MPP Andre Kanchin, and to steal one of the Premier's lines, she is an absolute champion for the people of Innisfil. Thank you. And of course, our neighbor, the Attorney General as well, for all of your support in ensuring that we can move forward with developing this critical infrastructure for our community. The issuance of this MZO will accelerate the creation of a new South Campus Health Hub right in Innisfil, and we are committed to enabling the health, wellness, and resilience of our community. Not only will the South Campus address the urgent need for health care in Innisfil and Simcoe County, it will also generate approximately 3,000 permanent jobs and will help facilitate additional economic growth for our town. This is an incredible moment for Innisfil. And I'm excited to see how the next two decades will unfold as the South Campus grows into a full service hospital for our community. Thank you. I'll now invite uh, Vice Chair uh, Doug Frost to the podium. Thank you. Grab my glasses. problem with wearing glasses. There we are. So thank you, Premier Ford. Thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you, Minister Elliott, Attorney General Downey, uh, MPP Kanjan. You've brought us incredibly good news, and it's wonderful to have you in here in person today. At RVH, we're focused on bringing quality, accessible health care closer to home. We've done it with regional cancer care, and more recently, we've done it with our cardiac expansion. And make no mistake, the proposed North Campus expansion and the South Campus development in Innisfil will completely transform health care for all residents of this area. Today's announcement of a $2.5 million planning grant and the approval of the minister's zoning order provides certainty that a hospital can be built on our Innisfil site. It will accelerate our plans and allow RVH to get on with the detailed site planning and further community consultation. So RVH intends to submit stage one of its capital plan in early April. And you know we'll be knocking on your doors again, anxious to secure those necessary approvals to keep this project moving forward. So Attorney General Downey and MPP Kanjan, thank you again for the strong ongoing advocacy on behalf of your constituents. Uh, and again, especially to Janice Scott, who really has made the South Campus a priority over her, eight, over her 17 years here at RVH. So how fitting is it that we're able to celebrate this moment uh, as you prepare for your retirement later this spring? Thank you, Janice. So in healthcare, we must see beyond the demands of today. We have to look a decade in advance. Uh, it's that kind of foresight that really builds great communities. So it's for that community of the future that we say thank you. Um, thank you for your trust in RVH. Uh, thank you for seeing the future. And thank you for imagining the possibilities. So I'll now turn it back to Premier Ford to address the same question. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the media. If those with questions could please form a line behind me at the microphone. It'll be one question and one follow-up per reporter. Okay. Hi, Premier Ford. Hi, how, uh, how are you? Good. Shane MacDonald from Barry Advance. Yes. Um, I was just speaking with some people who are immunocompromised, and uh, they expressed some concerns about uh, the dropping of the mask mandate. And uh, you know, going out in public into a restaurant, um, and I'm wondering what you would say to those people about you know the way forward uh, as we begin to get sure. out of this pandemic, hopefully. Well, I'd say keep your mask on, uh, and that's going to be an option. That's the direction uh, we received from from Dr. Moore, and as you see right across the country, I think BC announced they're dropping it uh, today. They just announced it and bang, dropped it. And we're, we're one of the last jurisdictions in North America to be doing this. And I've always been cautious. Uh, as I say, I've, uh, I've been accused of being the most cautious. And I have no problem with being the most cautious. And we're going to continue to be cautious. 
So anyone who wants to wear a mask, uh, I encourage you to wear a mask. And just as a follow-up, um, can you tell me a bit about why you guys chose Innisfil for this new hospital? There's, you know, lots of places want a new hospital, right? So yeah. what it is about Innisfil? Well, well, first of all, we're building new hospitals, the likes of which this country has never seen before. We're putting $30.2 billion of investments and in renovating and building hospitals right across the, uh, right across Ontario. And uh, I gotta, I'll talk specifically about Barry and, and Innisfil. The, 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 number one, they're beautiful. Uh, Barry's a beautiful city. Innisfil is a beautiful town, and people are flocking here. And I encourage everyone. And this is when I when I say Mayor Dolan's a champion. Uh, go online and look under the orbit. Uh, you've, you've never seen anything like it. It's absolutely spectacular. More and more people after this pandemic want to get out of the city and uh, if they have to commute, they're putting a, a GO train stop there as well. So they'll be able to hop on and zip into Toronto if they need to. Uh, it's just an incredible uh, area and it's a growing area. And more and more people are moving up here of all different ages. It's absolutely booming. Uh, Barry and in Innisfil, and I just want to again thank thank uh, the mayor for the incredible job she's done. Uh, I want to thank her for for requesting the MZO and keep requesting those MZOs because we need housing. We're in desperate need of housing for everyone. We need affordable housing for everyone, and more and more people uh, are, are moving out of the out of the uh, jurisdiction of Toronto and GTA. And we're, we're building the infrastructure and we're building the roads and we're building bridges and highways. The 413 is absolutely critical. The Bradford Bypass is absolutely critical for the growth we're going to see. Folks, we're, we're going to see 200,000 more people move into our province uh, every single year. That is, that is a staggering amount. But it's a good thing because we're short 338,000 people to fill the fill the jobs right now and with our expansion of broadband too we're spending 4.2 billion dollars uh, throughout the province so everyone can have high speed uh, internet connection and that is absolutely critical and it just allows people to work from home too and I, I, I'm excited I'm excited about the future thank you uh, hi Premier Sean Gibson from BarryToday.com hey Sean how are you um, not too bad thank you the, the South Campus was talked about long before uh, COVID came about. How important was it to fast track the funding uh, for this hospital because of COVID? How did COVID make you realize that healthcare was important to contribute to in the area? Yeah, and I'm gonna, before I pass it over to the Minister of Health, which has just been my right hand person, and, and I'm so grateful for all the work uh, uh, Minister Elliott has is, is done, uh, we, we have to move speed to market on everything, on housing on, on uh, making sure we have the hospitals built, schools built. We're spending $148 billion on infrastructure. And be, for 15 years of the previous government, they ignored it. They ignored hospitals, schools, uh, infrastructure, uh, transportation systems. We're building phenomenal subway systems in, in uh, Toronto, GTA. We're expanding uh, GO trains to a tune of $60 billion so we can connect people. Uh, I'm a business person. I, I can't go through government hurdles and all the barriers and everything. Let's get it done. As I, I said to Janice, get it done. And uh, we're moving at a rapid uh, speed. And I just want to thank everyone uh, in Ontario and all sectors for, for helping out. Very few jurisdictions in North America are experiencing the growth, uh, the economic growth. Well, they just announced yesterday, hundred and what was it, 198,000 jobs were created. Those are like staggering numbers uh, in, in, in one month. So thank you to the people of Ontario. That's, that's what I can say. They get the credit and I'll pass it over to the Minister of Health because I have to tell you, she was instrumental in pushing the file forward and the $30.2 billion and she's just a, a, a true leader.
Well, we did need to move very quickly when the <coughs> pandemic started several years ago because we were behind in many things. One, we had a warehouse of expired PPE, so we had to move quickly on that. We also didn't have a comprehensive testing system or laboratory system, so we had to put all of that together. It was like building a plane as you're flying it, literally. And we also were way behind in terms of the number of beds available in our hospitals. We've spent over $5 billion, and um, with that, we've created over 3,100 additional beds, which we certainly needed at the peak of the pandemic to make sure that we could house all of our patients and hospitalize them within Ontario. We're also able to help uh, with patients from Manitoba as well during the course of the pandemic. But these beds and the beds that are going to be built here, ultimately when the hospital in Innisfil becomes a full service hospital, we really need to make sure that we can take care of all of the people um, in Ontario, wherever they live. But this was um, a massive project, as the Premier indicated. We are building other hospitals as well to make sure that we can catch up to make sure that we can have the number of beds, both uh, medical surgical beds as well as intensive care beds um, to meet the needs of patients, both during the pandemic and now, of course, that we're working on all of the uh, surgeries and procedures that had to be postponed because of COVID. So we are going to continue to uh, need and use those beds. And uh, just my follow-up to Premier. Sure. Um, not to bring up a hot topic that is uh, usually for you, but uh, a lot of the times you've been open about heading to your cottage and you come through this way yeah. over the last many years. Uh, has the RVH ever uh, meant anything to you and your family or do you have you ever had any personal experiences with the RVH? Yeah, thank thank God we, we didn't ever have to rush to the, the hospital and it's not a hot topic uh, for me. I'll be very frank, I work 24-7. It drives my wife absolutely crazy that I get on that phone and I don't stop, but that's part of the job and we're going to continue working all the way uh, right up to the election on june the second and and moving forward after that i just i don't i don't i don't i don't like just sitting back and relaxing i like working this but is uh last that's it last no. question thank you hey jamie hi mr premier um mr premier the, the the mask mandate coming down of course you announced it school boards um some school boards are going to defy it. Some school boards said they were going to, were disappointed and wanted it extended a few weeks. Some school boards have even backtracked on their statement what they said today. What are you going to tell school board boards about the mask mandate? They want something a little different than what you're offering or you're telling them. Well, let me, let me be very clear to the school boards. They aren't medical experts. Uh, the chief medical officer is the expert and he is, uh, he is, uh, and it has done his due diligence. He's consulted with other uh, medical officers, be it Dr. Devilla or Dr. Etches in Ottawa. He doesn't make these decisions lightly. Uh, but our expectations to the school boards, uh, and to the exception of the parents that want their kids to put masks on, follow the direction of the chief medical officer, plain and simple. That's what we expect, and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll do that. I follow up on that question do I wreck my second question yes. <laughs> what do if they don't uh, I, I guess you have uh, um, a method to deal with that but going to my second question um, daylight savings times this weekend you passed a bill to get away with uh, get rid of daylight savings time provisioning that some other regions uh, join you they haven't are you going to stick with daylight saving time or are you going to uh, Go alone and, and uh, no, I think I think we eventually stick with it. Daylight savings time and uh, move, you know, just be like the rest of the North America, right? But it's nice to have those long days now, and it's nice to get out there and and as we go through the the summer, we can spend more time outside and and uh, that's what I look forward to spending time with the the families and and friends, uh, folks. We we just we we have to be very very cautious, but. We we have to move forward on it. Like people are tired, they want to get back to their normal lives, and and uh, yes, we've been cautious, but we need to move forward. And we'll always be cautious. I just want to—is this it? Yeah. So I just want to wrap up to the people of Barry and Innisfil. I want to thank you for everything you've done. Uh, you won't find two better representatives to represent uh, your opinions and your voice down at Queens Park. Then Andrea Kanjan and Doug Downey, you're well represented here. You also have Caroline Mulrooney in the in the region, 
and uh, I can assure you have a very, very loud voice there. They're true leaders, and we look forward to your support on June the 2nd for uh, all three of them. So thank you. God bless. Have a very safe weekend, everyone. Thank you.